you look out for your friend and know that your friend is probably addicted. And when we observe these lessons carried out in school, they can give us answers like, when my friend gets upset very easily, when she's uh, very frustrated easily, uh, we know that something is wrong, you know. Um, when, when you tell them to stop, they cannot stop. We tell them to go out, they don't want to go out. And what do they do? So some students share with me, oh, we really pull them and drag them out to play games. Uh, one time, two times, we're not successful, but we try and we're persistent. So even the teens themselves, they're helping each other. Peer um, influence in a positive way, and hence, I think as a family, you can actually reinforce that as well. Another example, um, some people think that this gaming may be very for boys, but actually it may not be true. I think for girls, they play different type of games. Um, like people say Candy Crush, played by a lot of females. And um, I had a call last year from my dad's friend who said, my daughter is always online, what do I do? And when I talked to her, what is she addicted to? Not games, but dramas. Korean dramas. <laughs> I think we can identify with that. Korean dramas even for ourselves. Last time my mom, Hong Kong serials, can watch you the night. At first I remember she came and scolded my brother and me, and me for watching till 3 a.m. And then suddenly she sat down and watched with us. And we cried together, you know, as a family because it's the soapy opera. So, you know, they, they start to identify with what we are going through and the doubts have the same thing. Okay, and I remember when I was counseling a boy who was on the verge of dropout. He's a repeat student in the US. He is always online and he's socially withdrawn totally. And, and I'm like, okay, so what do I do? As a very young counselor there, and I ask the more senior ones, what do we do? And she said, um, yeah, because this boy is always, when you talk to him, don't know, don't know, nothing, no. I don't know whether you experience that sometimes, or whatever you ask, no, nothing, okay. There's only one word, answers. So what do we do with these children? You find that, you know, I just cannot get anything out of him. Um, so the senior counselor said, okay, what about letting him hold the mouse? Let him take charge and show you what he's doing online. And I said, okay, let me try. And lo and behold, it was a total different uh, experience altogether. He suddenly becomes very talkative, talk nonstop, show me all the sites, all the songs he's listening to. And why was he doing all this? Because he misses um, his hometown. Because he was a migrant to the US, is very lonely. And he's being a repeat student, he has no friends. He had to turn to this for solace. So there is a reason why um, some of our students are excessively turning to these online spaces. So understanding them and knowing where they come from is so helpful. So we believe that the more you understand your kid, the more creative you can be in your approach. And you can be very targeted to know what works for your kids. Okay, relationships, very quickly. Um, instead of talking about cyberbullying, it's just a negative thing, we try to put a positive spin to the curriculum, which is about socialization, about building relationships. So we, we want to encourage them how to be uh, sensitive in your online remarks. We teach about netiquette from young. Okay, if you use caps all the time, that's actually like shouting. So simple things like that, starting from young and building on to when they are older. Okay, how do they be more sensitive, social, culturally sensitive in your remarks? About the cyber world, okay? Cyber citizenship. We want to encourage them to have a positive presence. So it's not just about the do's and don'ts, the dangers, okay? But also about harnessing technology. Uh, we learn from our consultants as we develop the curriculum that when we teach um, this cyber world, we need to teach a little bit like when we go touring, when we go overseas, we, what do we do? We find out about the country, right? What is the temperature like? What food do we eat? What clothes do we wear? We find out before we enter the world. But about the cyber world, sometimes we don't teach our kids what it is all about. They just enter it. Okay, Google this. Okay, Wiki this. So there is a gap in the understanding. And how do we scaffold this understanding? So can we slowly teach them about what the cyber world is about? Uh, we, so some things we touch on our privacy settings. This we talk about uh, what is, does it mean to be connected online? And um, what is digital footprints? And the commercial models in the cyber world. That you are entering an adult world when you're online. You are having a global audience when you're online. So you need to be more cognizant. Okay, with this in mind, 
What are some things we can do to reinforce learning at home? Now, from our research with our kids, they keep telling us authentic case scenarios works very well with them. So using newspaper articles to tell them, oops, okay, it can happen to me. So for example, we have lessons like, it can happen to me. That is a lesson in itself. Okay, because they feel that, oh, it may not happen to me, it's overseas, or it's somebody else, but if it's a local example, if it's a real case, okay, they realize that it can happen to us, uh, any one of us, even adults, like any choice example. So from that example, what can we learn? We can learn about digital footprints. We can learn about what is private today, maybe public tomorrow. Um, it's so uh, prevalent now. Candy Crush. <laughs> Okay, a boy clocked up $4,300 in bill. How many of us are Candy Crush players? Okay, <laughs> some honest people. Okay, I started playing because I wanted to learn their world as well and connect with my nephews. Um, yeah, so this is about role modeling. Okay, are we ourselves playing this excessively? And how do we role model for our children? Okay, and with this, I want to show you a video and then of my segment here, okay? Um, okay, this is a two minutes video. talk about it more um, at the very end during our panel discussion. Now, I'd like to invite Dr. Song to share the last part. What if something really goes wrong? What do we do? Okay, what happens when things go awry? Like, uh, you might see some of these reports out there, or you might see some of your children like that. 
Do you see some of the children like uh, having bad eggs, neck neck eggs and glazy eyes and eye strain? How many of you have seen such in your students, your children? Yeah. <laughs> right. So on this uh, the next part I'm gonna be just talking um, quite quickly about what happens when things go right. So we we're talking about some intervention and the Pac-Man is back. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I'll I'll still be talking about safe. Uh, but it probably means different things, it's not about, except for S, which are your safety tips. Right? When things go awry, you still will try to enforce some of the safety tips. Uh, can you remember I? Just remember for, reminder for those who haven't paid your taxes, huh? second time around. I, integrity, you get R, respect, A, astuteness, and S, security. You guys did very well. And of course, uh, when things go awry, you may want to seek the advice of professionals. Uh, do you know that in every school that your child goes to, there is a school counsellor, right? And in some schools there are two. But if you think that you would rather seek professional help from people who have expertise in uh, counselling and cyber-related areas, you may look out at some of the external agencies like, do you know some of the agencies like TACH and some of this? What are some of the agencies? Okay, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay, but you can ask, or you can make a contact with your school counsellor, the child's school counsellor, and speak with the school counsellor first, right? And of course, friends. Some of the friends who may have children who have uh, gone through this as well, you can seek some advice from them. And, and remember Esther said earlier about anchoring on something that's enduring, and she talked about values. And it's also very important for us to talk about values with our children. Uh, one of the exercises is called values clarification. Basically, we want to talk about something like, uh, what are some of the thing, important things, what are five important things in your life? Uh, a little bit more mor morbid. If I were to die tomorrow, what do I want you to be remembered for? So that will reflect some of the values that they embrace. For example, your kid says, oh, actually, I, want, I value achievement. I want to do well in my studies. I want to do well in my sports and all. So I'll, I'm going to uh, share with you a little technique called WDEP. It's actually a counselling technique from reality therapy. Basically, what do you want? So if your student, if your child says, oh, I want to achieve, then you go on to D and ask, what are you doing about it? And then the child may say, oh, actually, I'm just playing games five hours. I go to school and I sleep in class, and sometimes I don't go to school enough. So the next question you ask will be to evaluate. Is what you are doing, like spending five hours on, on the internet, going to help you get what you want to achieve and go to RI, or sorry, SST, or something like that? <laughs> okay, so, so the WDEP is quite an interesting, uh, useful technique. What do you want? What are you doing? If what you're doing is not getting what you want, let's just evaluate. And also talk about the pros and cons of spending five hours uh, in, on, on the internet every day. And then the P would really be a plan. So what are you going to do about it then? Then you can discuss and say, oh, maybe I should just spend, uh, for a start, two hours. And I spend two hours. <laughs> As I remember, lady, one hour of homework, one hour computer, right? <laughs> maybe I can't actually ask our computer. And then I'll do like three hours homework, something like that. OK? So, so that's the E. And sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes children may not want to take on some of your strategies. So I would encourage you to be determined, to, be, to persevere. And like uh, Winston Churchill said, never give up. I will hear from some, uh, I on Monday I heard about, uh, from a touch counselor that he has still been seeing a student for two years. So sometimes it takes more than uh, quite a bit of time to wean off some of these things that they've been so entrenched in. All right, so I will pass it back to Esther. Yes, I still will round up with the last slide, and then we have a panel. I guess finally we just have to say um, this thing that, just like the synopsis of the, the, the seminar has written, as the African proverb says, it takes a village to raise a child. And today we know that the village has expanded. It's not just one village. It's now become a global village. And this village is not just confined to physical villages, but also the cyber, the cyber world, the cyber village. So together we can make a difference, and each of us have our roles to play. 
So today we want to invite different people from different places to share with us how we all play our roles to raise our child in the 21st century because it's so complicated. So we hear from our students, we're going to hear from our panelists from different um, organizations and agencies. And uh, we want to ask you, invite you to join us together to have this vision of raising a child to be discerning and responsible citizens in the cyberspace. With that, okay. thank you. That's the time to Melissa. Thank you, Dr. Song and Ms. Esther Tan. Maybe we would like to give them a round of applause. Yeah, we hear from the students' world, and now we have heard the specialist world. Okay, let's. I think we all are interested to also hear perspective from different group of people. And now we will go, move on to the last segment uh, to have a dialogue with our span, uh, panelists. Let me just introduce and welcome our panelists. We will have Mr. Edmund Tay. Um, a rep from uh, Media Literacy Council, and we will have Mr. Lina Tan, a rep from Law Society of Singapore, and Mrs. Mabel Lee, a rep from the school, which is as a vice principal, together with our two presenters just now, Mr. Song and Ms. Esther Tan, with Ms. Ng as the moderator for the panel. And I believe you probably have a uh, return your questions or comments using the to take meet just now. So uh, let's have the dialogue that started. Uh, Ms. Ng, please. 